A fact, this is Digital Cells and I'm going to show you how I make a track using my coding. Coding in actual fact can be a lot of different things. People who enjoy things like knitting or weaving or making craft and doing that as well, I think is still a lot of it's just about processing things and I'm doing this process now and then I do this process and then I do this process. You don't have to be like a computer scientist or a mathematician to kind of get involved. There's lots of possible routes into coding that don't have to be the traditional routes, I think. I'm gonna show you how I make a track using tidal cycles. Um, so I'm going to start by making a pattern for our bass. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a pattern to play. And everything basically is running over and over in a loop for a cycle. So this here is a pattern of three notes out of a possible eight in the cycle being played. But to hear what this pattern sounds like, we have to give it some samples to play. So here I'm going to use two different bass samples. This first one here is just like a sub bass sample and this one here is an FM bass sample as well. So we can hear what that sounds like by running the code by pressing command and enter. It's on Mac. But we might want to add some effects to that. So here I'm going to change the sustain and release time. I'm going to give it some shape as well. Here I'm going to layer it with a slightly faster version of itself, so that sound will be slightly pitched up, giving it a bit of a detuned effect. So this is okay, but it's kind of a bit static at the moment. So I'm going to give it some notes to play. Um, but instead of me explicitly programming it in a pattern of notes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the computer choose the notes so that at any point throughout the cycle it can choose one of these notes to play. These numbers represent different notes where zero is corresponding to like a middle C. This is about two semitones below that. This is three semitones above and seven, seven semitones above. Actually, a couple of friends of mine used to throw house parties and another of my friend was involved in the live coding scene already. And so she would sometimes bring her laptop along to this party and kind of like plug in her laptop and play. I remember kind of thinking, this is really cool and interesting because I was living in Leeds at the time. And so they started running some workshops specifically for women and non-binary as well, which helped demystify the tech side and make it really go like inclusive and something that I could maybe have been a part of. I went to one of those workshops, got really into it one weekend, I think, and started making music. And then a couple of people like Alex McLean, who is behind a lot of the live coding community, started inviting me to play some gigs and getting a bit more into it that way. And what else I can do is add in here, so we're just occasionally on the third cycle, we're going to shift it up 12 semitones, so like an octave. We might want to add some functions to that as well to give it a bit of something extra. Here I'm going to use this thing called modfunk, and modfunk is actually a function that I've defined already up here which is kind of taking a few different functions and chaining them together. So what we're doing is we're saying on every fourth cycle, basically bit crush this down. Every fifth cycle, we're going to affect the panning. And then on the sixth cycle, we're going to uh, change the speed slightly. So we can see here we've written sometimes, so we're only applying that function sometimes. But we can use other things as well, like rarely. And rarely applies any function that you give it 
kind of less often than sometimes. And so what I like to do sometimes this kind of function. So basically we're offsetting by 0.125 fractions of the cycle. And with that offset, we're going to add in a different sample from the sample folder. So this first sample in the folder and the second sample in the folder. And so that's going to add in basically a different sound at this offset. of variety within our grave these days. The traditional thing that you can expect is a computer screen being projected somewhere in the room on some surface and a lot of the time on that you can see the code that people are writing but not necessarily always and a lot of people do a lot of interesting visual stuff now as well. Maybe if you see the code get a bit distracted by that when actually people should be you know listening to music and dancing as well but that's one of the main kind of features of a traditional algorithm, I guess. And then obviously people dancing is the main outcome that you want. There's definitely a very strong focus on community in the algorithm, and people have put a lot of effort and work into making it a great community to be a part of. People are working to make it diverse in terms of gender and race and kind of a lot of various aspects. If you wanted to join and start playing a gig, there's a very low barrier to entry. You don't need to be really, really proficient. They'll just kind of let you come in and play. And the thing about it being open and everybody sharing ideas and sharing their music freely, I think is such a big thing. And it's quite inspirational to see people being so open. And by doing things like sharing your screen and things like that, it's very much around this ethos of trying to make sure that, you know, everyone can be included in that. I think it's a really important thing. Now we might want to add in some drum patterns as well. So I'm going to start off by creating the kick sound. And I want to do that by layering up two different kicks. So that's kind of okay, but maybe a bit boring. So we can add some effects and select a low pass filter. You can add in this shape function to give it a donk sound. Another thing we could do here is actually give it another pattern to play. So here we're saying gain of VPAT. So VPAT here is already defined, I've written it earlier on. So every time we're passing a 1 into this function, it's going to play the sound that we've just made. So here it's going to play it twice. When you see a squiggle, it's basically not going to play anything. So in effect, it's similar to how maybe like a drum machine or like a step sequence in my work. And now I can add this clap pattern as well that I've written earlier to this one here. So basically we're adding a clap to this kick sound. So here's our clap sample. So S is just representing this sound function. We're basically going to change the speed. So that sometimes this sample is playing slightly slower, sometimes it'll be slightly faster. But we're only going to add it in rarely, so we're not going to hear it that often. So the rest of the drums, again, I'm giving it here this pattern of gain, which is like the one that we saw earlier, with the three notes divided uh, throughout the cycle. We've got our sound, which is just a hit sample, and then we've got some more effects. And now we can add in the snare. Here's our effects. And this is basically saying every five out of 10 cycles, we're gonna shift it open. And then finally, I'm going to add in some break samples because no live coding check would be complete without any break samples. So here are our break samples here. We're going to randomly choose which samples we want to play. I'm going to add some effects to that. So here we're going to change the speed. So 0.75 means it will be slower, so lower in pitch. But the minus actually means that it's going to play the sample in reverse. And then we high press filter to that.
pandemic affected me because all of my gigs got cancelled and all the future things I was planning. It's hard to think about when things are going to happen again, like everything's just in limbo really. Obviously it kind of affects you from an artistic practice point of view as well. Not being able to do things like go to a gig that people are hosting, like an Algorave, or I find a lot of inspiration from other people's music anyways, so being excluded from that is kind of creatively limiting. Obviously they're still keen to play and still keen to make music for other people and there's been a lot of stuff that's been happening online instead of in real life that's that's really interesting and I think that's opened up a lot of creative possibilities with technology weren't being explored before because we didn't have a need to do it and I think that's really exciting. Doing things online can make things a bit more accessible for everyone as well in, in ways that weren't explored before so I think that's been really interesting to see come out of the kind of pandemic. One place that is a good place to get started is just going on Top Black website which is kind of the home of everything in live coding. For Tidal Cycle specifically, there's a YouTube channel called Kindome who does a lot of playlists about, you know, how to make certain ideas in through code. And I think stuff like that can be really helpful to you, just so you can kind of see someone else going through the process. And there's often a lot of like workshops as well for people that are kind of designed to be really low barrier to entry, like people who aren't themselves coders perhaps and don't feel like could call themselves like a coder or anything like that, but they, they're interested in learning. I think there's a lot of people working around that as well to try and get people included in the scene. So now I can create some synth patterns. So here again, we're just doing gain and we're passing it this pat, which is something that I've already uh, defined up here. It's a pattern of ones and squiggles again. We're letting the computer choose the notes. We're layering two different synth samples of the changing at the sustain and release to make it a bit shorter. We can add that to the effect. And we can shift the note up. Cool, so our functions here, again we've got this mod funk, and this mod funk is just the one that we've written up here before. They're going to offset again, so this offset is basically instead of what we were doing before, we're going to choose a different note from the scale, so it's going to be from this Egyptian scale. We're going to choose out some of the first few notes to offset by, and we're going to say every sixth cycle we're going to play the pattern in reverse, and every seventh cycle we're going to slow it down. And then finally our vocal effects. So we're going to use this rave samples and we're going to randomly choose out of the first eight of those. Again, we're just shaping the sustain and release, putting some shape to it, and then we're pitch shifting these up. Finally our functions, I'm going to chop it up by varying degrees. I'm sometimes going to apply this accelerate function. So this is going to make the sound appear like it's uh, speeding up or slowing down. And then finally, we're going to give it a pattern structure to play with. So here we've got these characters, A, B, C, D, E. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to convert them to their ASCII form, which basically allows us to read these characters as a sequence of ones and zeros, kind of like how we had before. And then that convert that into whether the sound should play or should not. And now we can put all of this together, combining all these different variables into one big chunk of code. So we can hear what that all sounds like together. <laughs> <laughs> 